Um, okay, cool, cool. So look at the document. Um, the plan. Okay, so whenever we were, we're defining it, first of all, composition. So what's your standard composition that you go for? Um, so, I, so the problem I think I had is I got, because of what you taught me, uh, Ling Bang got real easy against Terran, and I, I think I had been going Roach with Protoss, but then I stopped doing that. Mm -hmm. But I think I probably should go back to Roach, and I think I was going to try to do that here. Um, but then oh, okay. also I come in with Mutas at about, it's probably around seven to eight minutes, uh, along with Roaches. Um, okay, so you haven't really had a plan. You've kind of been loosely kind of playing Ling Bane because that's what we focused on in ZVT, and that's kind of just bled over into your Protoss, and then you've been kind of randomly taking up from there, or is it always Mutas you go for? Uh, no, I always always go for Mutas, especially with Protoss, because it's so good to keep them in their base. Um, okay, cool. And um, Roachling Muta is really good, so you're absolutely right. Look, if we open Roachling into muta that's like such a solid style of zvp you will go very very far with that it's a fantastic way to play protoss um there's a lot of ways to play against air and and you know sky toss i think the easiest way in my opinion it does take a lot of people aren't comfortable with it but it's literally just practice like anything else is just play mass air just mutas and corruptors and just overwhelm them before they get too far in the game and if you have a proper opening it's not that hard Will you throw some games? Yes. <laughs> Will you run muters into Mass Phoenix without having built Corruptors yet? Yes. <laughs> Will you, uh, you know, let your Corruptors sit in prismatic alignment sometimes? Yeah. But, you know, as you get practice, you'll have so much more money than the Protoss. Um, you, you basically can outposition them and run in and take the correct fights. So that's a branch, though. All right. So Verse Sky Toss is a very specific branch. I, I can't imagine that's the majority of your games, right? Maybe one in three first Protoss at most. Uh, uh, yeah, that sounds about right. You got cheeses, and then you've got... Um, I've had some problems also against um, some cheeses. Different type of Protoss. It's Protoss has just been giving me hell since the last time we talked. But um, <laughs> but yeah, Sky Toss has beaten me multiple times, and I've been frustrated with that. No worries. So basically, sure. all you do with that style is you just try to get five bases up as quickly as possible and you just play mass meter corruptor so you just keep getting upgrades you can go mostly attack is what i go for because i'm just trying to kill their units as quickly as possible the armor is very good on corruptors versus basically everything that protoss has especially phoenix and carriers but even against void rays it helps a decent amount doesn't really matter don't care the important thing is you need five bases 10 gases asap once you realize it's sky toss um so get your spire as quickly as you can you know off your probably six seven queens i imagine you'd probably end up having if they're harassing you with oracles or void rays or whatever in the early stages um and then you just build muters to deal with them uh corruptors if there's lots of phoenix and just pure muta versus everything else basically and the way you oh. micro is you just control click your corruptors and you move them in front of your muters so the phoenix are automatically shooting them instead of your mutalisks so that's kind of the, the micro or i mean if you wanted you could have them on separate control groups but normally you don't need to it's just fly them around in a big clump and then oh we're gonna a move in and we're just gonna maybe we either pull the muters behind the corruptors or we move the corruptors forward in front of the muters either way works yeah it sounds like a cool style. I mean, it's kind of similar to what I tried to do here. Um, <laughs> this guy hit me way earlier than I expected with a couple carriers, which really threw me off, even though I knew that he, or he said he was doing Sky Toss. So, um, but yeah, I think <laughs> once I rebuilt, that's what I tried to do, is exactly what I think. I ha Well, no, I had some roaches too. I don't know if I ever got to the mutas, but I had a bunch of corruptors this game. So this is not going to be a very useful game for us in in many regards for standard CVP, but it will be very useful on two things. Number one, we're going to talk about how you can just fucking kill 90% of Protoss players because their builds fucking suck. Um, like up to a really high level, Protoss players just get away with ranking up because their opponents don't attack them. This is in every single matchup I watch. They're, they're basically really vulnerable. And this is no exception. Um, massive, massive vulnerabilities to basically the standard attack I was already planning to get you to do uh, based off us saying we're sling muta already. So you will not have to worry about macroing up versus this. But hey, this is a big macro situation. We might as well 
talk about what we can do better and have a look at what can we do better in this flexible situation. We're trying to macro up against a Sky Toss player and, and kind of seeing what we can do and all that. Um, obviously, you already pointed out the double Roach Horn's not great, but what we're oh, going to no. focus on... I, I don't know how that happened, honestly. Oh, it happens to everybody, mate. <laughs> it's, we've, all, we've all built two... I think I built three of one structure the, like a few weeks ago. People were like, wow, you built a third. I, I don't know what it was, an infestation. But I was like, and I was like, really? No. And I went back and looked and I was like, yeah, I built a third one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, it just happens if you're you're in an unfamiliar situation, right? So here you're going, oh, it's Skytos. Ooh, and you're trying to like figure out what to do on the fly, essentially. Um, yeah. You don't really have a solid plan. You're, you're, you've got, okay, I've got to go to feel. I've got to go greedy, right? You're like, okay, I've got to get lots of get fourth, drone up nice and hard. Maybe I'll try to slow his third down with some wings. You know, you had some ideas you were trying to put together, but it wasn't like a, a planned out build or anything like that. And it just kills you with these two carriers and it's game over. Um, I know it goes for another 10 minutes, but this should be game over. Like, he literally could just move his carriers in and kill everything. He should well, be he does. in shift clicking drones, but yeah. He does Anyways. kill a lot of stuff, but yeah, I got corruptors and then fought him off and we went back and forth for a while, killed some of his bases, but eventually he had too many, too many carriers. Our, uh, our standard attacks will be three wins versus this in the future. But in terms of macro, let's take a look at how you macro. Let's take a look at your organization and let's see if maybe you got a bit disorganized because you had to kind of adapt in the situation a bit. So first things first, you took the free base in the back. Seems tempting, but it's only a single gas and six minerals. And your Zerg, you can defend as many hatcheries as you want. So actually always go for one of the front bases. And I would only first. take this back base as a fifth. So it's like, Got oh, it. it's a nice, easy to defend fifth base. If you're going to build a macro hatchery, you might as well build it on the back. Think of it that way, right? Or okay. you know, if you're in some situation where your back's up against the wall and that's your only option. But otherwise, try to take a front base just because um, especially the sixth gas guys is going to be really important for like muta swaps and things like that. So that's the first thing. Um, yeah, so drone out. up the other bigger, bigger patches first. Yeah. And leave that one for last. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, you also queued up a third queen here. Notice you got a third queen queued before you even went for that hatchery. So is that something yeah, you're always doing? No, that's... We'll see. Yeah, Maybe that... a misclick? Might not have realized. Yeah, I might have messed that. I might have canceled it here. Let's see. Did I? <laughs> no, you don't. But let's go back. I don't... Okay. You accidentally... Wait, 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 wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at your main. Check this out when your spawning pool finishes. Look at this. Click on your main. Okay. Okay, sorry, not not there. Right. Yeah, so you accidentally queued two queens up just before this one finishes. No, no, you queued one up. Wait, and then you queued another one. Maybe you did it off your hatchery hotkey and you were trying to build it off your natural. Either way, we don't need to build a third queen, right? Because you want to go third hatch, overlord, then third I, queen usually. Or, this or is what I did exactly. here. I think I tried to make more overlords, which... I didn't click to get the uh, larva. Instead, clicked W on the hatcheries, which makes queens. And with grid, it would make ah, overlords okay. if I had. That's that's what happened. Yeah, I, I know that there. sort of mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't use yeah. grid, but I've yeah. That, that's that's a. Uh, um, I uh, I accidentally do do something. I can't remember what I accidentally do, but there's like something something I accidentally do. I think it's um accidental layers sometimes when i don't have any lava available i'm not sure something like that either way third hatchery could be up a little bit quicker um other than that you've got a pretty damn quick link speed very quick link speed in fact so that's all good actually speaking of which when did we take our gas was this just standard 17 pool 17 hatch 17 gas let's take a look see it's what you changed me to last week yeah it was uh 17 pool 17 hatch yeah and then what was that 18 no 17 gas as well yeah that's yeah, solid okay that, that's all fine man now looking good a little paranoid with your drone checking around but that's all right <laughs> want to make sure there's uh there's no cannons and that's, that's definitely yeah, not going to complain saw... about you having some safety there i saw the probe come from back there earlier in the game i was like yeah yeah <laughs> get cannon rushed a few times so just checking 
No worries. All right, we inject. We should have that queen move into the natural. All right. Got that ling speed. We're going to pull two off, min off gas on the minerals. All right. Our main's a little oversaturated there because we pulled two off gas and the last two popped. So those ones we pulled off gas, we should have sent to the natural, right? Gotcha. Yeah. Um, Just by default, yeah? Yeah. Cool. And it's good to leave one on gas, right? There's no problem with that. Yeah, that's fine. It gives you more flexibility. Yeah. I like it. Um, so yeah, you're going like a really early fourth queen, even before the third hatchery. And you got like a lot of lava saved up. So the thing is, if you go four queens so early, notice you're not building drones. You got six lava. That units tab, one of the most useful things to look at in replays, right? I, I like to swap between production and units. And the idle lava kind of tells you, hey, what's going on? Why aren't we spending our money? And in this yeah. case, it's because you're spending all your money on queens. You're, yeah, Wait. so that's incredibly expensive this early. And it doesn't, it's not actually, the thing is you can go to five, six queens, every ZVP, every ZVT, whatever. It doesn't matter. You can go five, six, seven, eight, nine queens or whatever. The trick is though, you got to get that natural saturated. We've got to spend our lava, right? We've got to keep that economic machine rolling. So just delaying a queen 30, 40 seconds, squeezing out an extra three drones right then, which start mining it like catapults your income, right? Because it goes uh -huh. from three drones mining at three minutes and then bam, and then you got another drone that you can afford at 3.30 because of those three drones mining and then another drone at 3.45 and then another drone at four minutes and like bam, by this point, hey, it's four minutes. Our natural is completely full. 16 workers, 16 in the main, three back on gas and we're rallied to our third base. Instead, you're on 25, 28 drones and you're going, oh, I should build some Zergings because there's an adept coming which is going to slow those drones down even more. So yeah. um, for hindsight, uh, even as early as 3.30, you can see people already having built enough drones to fully saturate their natural if they have like a really crisp like hatch first opening. You'd okay. be about one drone behind that normally. And, um, you know, we don't need to hit the, the greediest timing. But if we're almost at four minutes and we haven't even started drones to go past the, the 10 on the natural, it's like, oh man, our income's really going to be way behind this game. So that's going to slow you down a lot. It's going to slow down that growth. Other than that though, so a bit of efficiency there, a bit of reordering, right? Making sure yeah. those drones are vital. Other than that, uh, it does look pretty good in that you're spreading creep. Um, I accidentally did click two overlords here. You built two overlords at once and clicked them to the same spot. So definitely something we've also got an overlord in the main and an overlord in the natural right so you don't really have that vision that we'd like I so these are around yeah yeah and and you can see where i'm signaling right on the mini map yeah mm -hmm. cool so like yeah i would love one 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 bam 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 and then we could fill in those edges about this time we can start rallying our fourth and fifth overlords out right for the oracles and stuff like that now obviously you know they're going sky toss you don't really want to put them out <laughs> you're like oh he's going void rays okay don't even bother right why, why why put overlords out there just keep them nice and far back we'll see what happens um but yeah I, i've gotten better at it it's it's still you know trying to rally them from the eggs especially um so, you know something we talked about last yeah. week but yeah i can still do better you clicking on the, the mini map with it spread. yeah yeah cool yeah, it's just that little yeah. habit. It's just for the first few minutes, right? It's build overlook, click on, and, and your mouse cursor should already be on the mini map as you're like, like as you're selecting the hatchery. You're kind of like, your mouse cursor is already where you want that overlord to go, right? That's that's when you you know you've got it as like a real deep muscle memory habit, where your mouse is there and you're like build overlord, click, and then your mouse cursor is moving to the next overlord position, and you like reselect the hatchery, build overlord, click. Does that make Lit sense? Yeah, so let me ask you something about that real quick. Um, yeah. So when, I, when I, I thought I came out of... I thought I understood control grouping eggs when we left the last um, coaching session. But I, I realized that I didn't because at first I was literally rallying not just the eggs but the larva as well. And it was causing just havoc. It was, like, it was crazy. So in the situation, say you have seven larva and you click and make an overlord... If you just rally on the mini map, that you're also at that point rallying your larva too, right? Or should I? Lava can't get click? a rally point. Only eggs can get a rally point. That's why, if yeah, and yeah, so you don't actually need to control click or anything like that in the wireframe. Like you don't need to select just that egg. So because 
if you just build one egg and then right click, the egg is the only thing that gets the rally point. Lava do not get rally points and it doesn't change the hatchery rally point because all you've got selected is that one egg. Then we reselect okay, the so hatchery to build a new overlord. So it's a completely new selection. And then we right click that on the minimap and that's also just that egg getting that rally point. Does that make sense? Okay, so for right clicking, yeah. it won't pick the larva, but when I'm doing like control, like uh, control adding clicking, to control groups, yeah. Then then it does, it's, right? It's everything you've got selected. That's why you've got to right. control click on the actual picture of the egg in the bottom whenever you're doing that. Right, yeah, which is <laughs> what I had to learn. And I was like, oh, okay, that's how you do it. Um, okay, <laughs> all right. So I got confused on the two. I thought that, yeah. even though I probably knew subconsciously that just right clicking would do what you just said. I no, that's cool. Okay. I mean, right. but that's, right. that's Makes also sense. why, like, you know, you got to build your drones and overlords in separate rounds as well, right? From your army units, because yeah. otherwise they'll. Uh, all get control group together right yeah yeah that would be a problem but yeah so, i mean being so able to throw them all into... that are really easy to fumble over so that's that's very good that you curiously were like what's going wrong and you figured that out on your own well done you've done a lot better than most people who would just go oh, i'm not going to do this anymore so good job thanks well it was causing massive havoc with you know like drones running across the map and joining you know, army control groups and stuff. It was, it was horrible. I finally figured it out, but yeah. Um, cool. Well, good job, right. mate. Um, okay, cool. So anyways, let's go back and look at your macro again. So yeah. from here, right? So you take a quick fourth base. Good idea, but I can tell you made it up on the fly. How can I tell? Because even though you're taking a fourth base, you're doing what looks like a big macro build. You're... Um, you're not really syncing up your worker production still because it's like a different rhythm to what you do with your normal build. It's always a bit weird, right? Doing a super macro build, right? So you see someone walling off completely with a forge and a cannon. Oh, okay, I gotta be greedier than normal. But how exactly, right? It's a different rhythm to your normal plan. Same thing you see a planetary on the natural, you see a Zerg friggin' full walling with three Evo chambers and two spines behind it at the start somehow, like insanely early. And you're like, oh, like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so it's a different rhythm and you're doing all right with it. But like here, I'm like, okay, we just injected our natural, but not our main. And now we're like bringing this queen out for some reason. Ah, okay. I think you accidentally injected your back hatchery. Maybe that's what happened. Fair enough. Twice. Yeah. Maybe twice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We don't have a queen injecting your third base in the back yet. Um, cool. But you can see like now your macro cycles are out of sync, right? Yeah. So you're not you're not gonna be like injecting and like your lava's sitting there for a long time. Um so that's kind of this thing where it's like, oh okay. In these scenarios where we want to adapt, we often go off book and start kind of chaotically doing things. Try to keep the macro cycles as this like thing that just keeps happening. You can chaotically be like, I'm gonna take a four minute fourth base. That's a good move. Like your fourth base here is a great move. But we wanna keep the unchanged macro cycles underneath it all, right? That, that should never change, basically. It's like, inject, 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 build drones, overlords. Inject, 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 build drones, overlords. That never changes, but the in-between, you can adjust as much as you want. I'm going to take a faster fourth. I'm going to rush a spire or a hydrodan, you know, all that stuff. Go for it. Okay. Cool. So essentially, looking at it, we can see that you just could have been up a lot further in drones off that earlier start um, against this sort of style. Um definitely we would just want to build a spire as quickly as possible when that layer once that layer's up uh, i'm not saying compromise your economy by rushing a layer at three minutes you could still have a normal layer timing we'd probably build seven or eight queens as well um and uh yeah and if you realize it's a carrier build like this which we didn't really do any scouting but we, we i guess we saw a fleet beacon somehow on the right side but uh oh well, basically... something might have seen it but i don't think i saw it <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> okay fair call just build it like a few spores at the front, like two spores, bring every single okay. queen to the front. And all you need to do is buy time until the thing stops. And you just basically want to A move, transfuse and pull back weak queens. Like if he target fires a queen, you pull it back kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, if the carriers come too deep like this, yeah, you can try to start a step underneath them and like attack the carrier itself. They just need to screw up really massively to actually let you kill a carrier. But I've seen pros lose carriers in this scenario to like six queens. So if, if a pro could do it, I'm sure Platinum League 
Platinum League ball blitz that happen, you know, a fair amount of the time. But usually, like I said, if you've got eight queens in a spore, it's just about killing the interceptors. Just by A moving, they'll automatically start killing the interceptors, lower the damage output, and then bam, you build corruptors. Why not muters here? Well, you could go straight to muters if you're not in a dire position, but I'd start off with six to eight corruptors because they're just going to absolutely destroy the carriers. And the thing is, if they're still building carriers behind it, well, you could very well go to 14 corruptors. Try to shift click these carriers. Let's say they're really good. They recall the moment they see the first corruptor popping. No worries. You gather up your 14 corruptors and you just fly into their base. Fly over the cannons, the batteries, doesn't matter. And just click on the, the carriers. You just click a carrier, click the next carrier. You can just shift click them down, basically. Um, if they are hiding next to five cannons and five batteries in the natural, that's fine. Go in the main and piss on the nexus, right? And force them to come and defend it. And then you can click on the carriers. Um, often the stargates are up in the main and the cannons are at the natural. So they can hide with the cannons at the natural. You just sit above the stargates and kill the carriers as they pop out is another thing you can do. And but you're nice. already swapping back yeah. into mass muter behind that because muters will give you the ability to fly around and kill probes and kill everything, right? And obviously we're taking a fourth base and a fifth base and going to 80 drones behind those corruptors as well, right? Because we want 10 gases is very important. Full 10 gases. And then you can make pretty much unlimited muter corruptor. Um, obviously you can make a round of lings on the ground to run in as well. And uh, yeah, they often can't defend that, but uh, you should be able to win basically just with mass air and it'll be nice and easy for you. So pretty good carrier timing from your opponent, to be honest. I'm pretty impressed um, that he hit as early as he did. Um, the problem for your opponent is that it's still something where this is countered by Roachling. I know that sounds silly, but let's open up a little guide I did a little while ago. So beginner to advance. ZBP. Let's find this one. All right, guys, what's up? We are going to be going into... I'm going to mute that. All right. So this was one of my first beginner to advance that I did. Let me link this up. On Discord with you, mate. And let me get our coach because I'm using two PCs. I'll put this in our coaching document as well. Beginner to advance. There is a set of notes as well. I think this is kind of the style I want to put us on. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'll put this up under composition and game plan and stuff. There we go. Uh, we've also got some notes for it. I don't know how useful the notes in there will be. They'll be right near the bottom of it. 22nd June, Serg aggressive ZVP guide. It's in those notes as well. Obviously that's all linked in the thing anyway. It's awesome um, you put this one in. I've actually, I'm at an hour 32 minutes on this video. <laughs> Oh, so oh into, into watching in the, it previously. Oh, awesome! It just it just in the past like three or four days, I've been watching this video. I that's awesome. So <laughs> awesome, yeah, good stuff, mate. I am uh, I'm glad then. So yeah, basically, what's what's nice about the start, and I'm tr I'm trying to do here is we're going because I'm I'm trying to remember it. This is a little while ago, like I said, it was in June, but I'm pretty sure I was just doing a. I think it was meant to be like a fifty fifty two drone roach ling shove, um, mass roach speed. I could be making ravages. I think I wasn't when I was showcasing it because I was like, oh, let's just make it new. You could easily spend all your gas on ravages, make it more all in with the ravager ling. It's going to slow down the muter swap behind it. But it's just like a classic, like, here's a big ground army. I'm not fully saturating three base. Like, I have a good economic start. It's a good standard macro opening. But then we cut workers at a certain point, make four billion units, go attack with it. And then we're swapping into what counters their counter to our counter. Because what counters this? Immortals, disruptors, Big ground armies, right, can deal with mass roach. None of that deals with uh, muters at all, right? So that's that's kind of the whole, the best way to play ZVP and to make it seem almost easy is if you really take advantage of the fact that Protoss production sucks balls. It's so bad. It's so bad. You know, Zerg plays, oh, Protoss units are so good. They're just better than our units. They should always win. Shield battery is so unfair. And I'm like, yeah, fucking Zerg players, man. Have, have you, have they we can't ever switch fucking... fast, right? Yeah, they're like, oh, it's so unfair. The Protoss has one immortal when you have like 20 roaches. How is that fair, Zerg? <laughs> like, come on, we're right. complaining about shield batteries when the guy has to defend with one unit and we have like a billion units. And we're like, oh, it's so unfair. It's like, but he has to survive with that one adept in the wall versus the 30 Zergling flood. Like that's <laughs> that's literally the situation they're put in because their production sucks. They're not flexible Um, yeah, as well. It takes a long time for them to build all in one direction. So... It was really fun in, in Heart of the Swarm. Um, 
I used to do this whole style that was like just constant unit swaps. You know, I was like, hey, I'm going ultras and then they're building immortals and I'm using vipers and then they're going high Templar and they've got this like high Templar immortal army. And then I add broodlords and then they're forced into air units. But then I swap back into like Hydra Viper while they're still on a medium amount of air units, right? And and they've built Tempest to kill the broodlords. Tempest do fucking nothing to like Hydras and Vipers and, and a regular army. So there was, there was just constantly always being one step ahead and it's all pre-planned and it, it's not trying to react to things. It's making the Protoss react to you. So <clears throat> if we take a look at the notes from that one, if you go through the uh, the Google Doc there, um, let's take a look. So it's like attack, build drones, do an attack, build drones was kind of the concept for it. We want to do pre-planned attacks, drone up, do another one. We have tight aggressive play that doesn't let the Protoss get away with greed. We'll naturally transition into the counter to their counters. Uh, and we'll naturally be safe because aggression equals safety. So um, looking at the actual build, blah, blah, blah. It's just a very standard opening. I mean, I was doing a hatch first. No, no, no. I did the pool first, actually, when I was showcasing this, at least in the lower leagues anyway. Um, we've got like some generic next step where it's like, okay, every game at four minutes, we build a Roach Warren a second gas and a fourth queen. And this is like a one size fits all. It's better if we just overlord scout and see if they're going Stargate or Twilight every game. And then we can kind of obviously focus on what we need to do a lot more. Where if you're not playing against Stargate, you really don't need extra queens. Just injecting queens and like a couple of creep tumors is all you need. If they're playing air, we'd much rather have six or, or seven queens and like, you know, a spore in each base as well, right? Yeah. Um... Okay, let's scroll down, scroll down. That's all standard build. Okay, attack timings. That's the most important thing. About 52 drones, four gases, eight drones on the third. So we want the third and fourth gas with this version at the same time as the first two gases. So basically about four minutes, we want to go up to four gases. Whereas normally with a macro build, you'd basically just go four minutes Roach Warren, second gas. And then you'd only take the extra gases once you're fully saturated on three bases. With this build, because we want to get more roaches, ravages, roach speed earlier, we're going to take those extra two gases on the natural a bit earlier. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. When when do we take them? That would be at the same time as we take our second gas and put back on gas mining, which is okay. four minutes. So now that's right. Against... Yeah, you said you're doing all these things at the same time. You're you're going for the uh, layer and all that at the same time, right? Yeah. Basically. Yes. Yeah. So we'll go four minutes roach warren um three gases and then a lair or 445 versus air now that's the advanced version you're at the point i don't know if i want to give you the advanced or the beginner version i think we'll give you the beginner version because beginner version can get you to diamond one easily <laughs> so don't don't get me wrong i call it beginner it's it's the easier version the one that doesn't isn't based on scouting but i i think Mommy. that would work out just fine um just because then you don't have to be reactive i think reactivity is a bit dangerous um you know focus on just getting your overlords out there dealing with an adept with some zerglings all that stuff um yeah, yeah. so i think we, we would just stick with the standard version the generic next step lower level is where it is okay. in the notes okay um yeah yeah 430 layer plus third and fourth gas it says there one production cycle after the okay so basically we do delay the lair and the extra two gases just a little bit there just to squeeze a few more drones out essentially because if we go everything at once and then we're sitting on 10 lava we have that problem that we had in that replay of yours just then right so we're just making sure we keep the the drone production going and delay that lair and gases just a little bit yeah okay all right gotcha. so what's what's let's check the attack timing that i do on that first game in the video so because I think this is about the time the carriers are hitting you. Maybe just a little after. It's pretty late. It's about 7.20, 7.30 in this first version that I do. So let's go back in the very first video to about four minutes. And let's see what gas timing did I do in that version of it. So I put back on gas. I go a roach horn second gas at four minutes. But I take my, my layer and my extra gases. I take a bit late at about 4.45. So they're about 10, 15 seconds late, which is actually crucial, right? Because every second matters. So it's really yeah. important to get all those on time. Um, either way, you might think, well, don't carriers beat this, right? If you're attacking and the carriers like you, no, because you can just run past them and kill all their shit and you'll kill their stuff faster than they kill your stuff. And because you got a Spire coming up and Spire does hard counter the, uh, the carriers, right? With Corruptors, like 
two carriers will take forever to kill that many roaches with roach speed. So you should be able to just dart on past and uh, and massacre them. Okay. So your opponent hit really good carrier time in this game, by the way. I'm very impressed. <laughs> 630 with two carriers. I'm like, what? Um, but yeah, if we just yeah, basically... Yeah, it surprised me past, as well. Good. It was good, dude. You were going 80 drones. I mean, if, if you had a spire already started the moment roach speed went down, I mean, it wouldn't have even been the end of the world. Like, if you just ran drones away and built a hatch elsewhere, I think you would have been okay. But um, what's cool now, though, is you have a plan, right? You'd already be massing roaches off 50 drones at this point, four gases. Your roach speed would be halfway done. You see these carriers coming. And if you've got good scouting, you see them leave his base. And what do you do? You see where I'm signaling, right? Mm. Those carriers yeah. are coming there. You just shift-click your guys like this. And you run in. And, and hell, you try to breach the natural as well. I mean, getting the third's good and the probe's there, but you could also try to just run into the natural. Just like one-shot the cannon, the sentry, the battery, everything. And just once you're in all three of those mineral lines, they're going to lose 40, 50 probes in a matter of seconds. It's it's game over. Yeah, I kind of... So I did... Once I finally got the roaches out after he had already taken out that fourth... I attacked him, but then I brought him back for some reason. I was like, why did I bring these back here? I should have just gone straight to the natural, like you said. Yeah. And he would have pulled <laughs> him off, probably. Same thing. If you get surprised by Mass Phoenix or anything like that, just always remember. Yeah, it's like just... just it, their job is to let you build a shitload of drones and then whatever your anti-air is behind it. Remember, in these situations as well, as silly as it sounds, keep droning during it. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of crazy. You're like, what? But it's like, hey, well, if your tech isn't ready and you're taking economic damage, you need to. You need to have that tech ready. Um... Yeah. Sorry, just putting some notes down there. No All good. Awesome. All right. So, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You just basically shove those guys in. I mean, the thing is, these links did a very good job. So if you ran these drones away... Let's let's think about this one more time. Okay, we're not ready for carriers. What do we do here? If if we were to see this a few seconds later, grab all of our drones, pull them back to this base, we'd build four spore crawlers there, maybe two in our main. Take this hatchery. We'd already oh, I guess highest priority would be the spire, which should have already, you know, been yeah. down. If we knew this was Sky Toss the moment the layer finished, that should be building in the very back of our base where it can't get sniped. Yeah. Um for sure. Normally, if you were doing the Roachling build, you'd start the Spire probably about now-ish or soon. Sometime like as you're moving across the map with your Roachling, right? To do your attack. You're, you're, you're starting your Spire and building a round of drones behind it. Getting up to six gases, 66 drones. Building a round of muters after your Roachling attack fizzles. They fly across the map and then you go back into Roachling. So it's big Roach Ravager Ling attack, big round of muters, back into big Roach Ravager Zergling. It's going to be your standard playstyle against air here. We'd go, oh, it's air. We're not going to go back into Roach Lane. We're going to stay on that mass air branch, right? So what do we need? A fourth base, a fifth base, and even more drones before massing air after the first round of muters, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Hey -o. Makes sense. Okay, cool. All right, so, uh, yeah, I think that's... Let's just eight times and see if there's any other lessons we can learn from this one. and brought them back right there <laughs> this game's this yeah this game's real affirming though because it's like dude your spire could have been finished a minute ago <laughs> and, and if it was you bounce back you can bounce back from these situations so quick man you can bounce back from them so quickly it's like it's insane right with with like if you're if you're practiced at it your opponents often are going to be like oh what do i do and then you're just like bam five bases drones everywhere and and all the once, once those carriers are dead your opponent has no army with this build as well and notice your opponent's doing what most players do. He's not transitioning. He's only building carriers. So this is what you find until you get to the higher levels. Like <laughs> the higher you get, it's like people will go two or four carriers and then they start massing speed void rays because they know you're going to build corruptors and the void ray count as the corruptor, right? But yeah. at this level, they only start the void rays once they see the corruptors killing the carriers. And that's going to be really common up to a very high level of play, right? Like... Even at low GM, sometimes I'll play someone who's like massing battle cruisers, and I'll be like, oh, okay, he's going to stop at two battle cruisers or four battle cruisers, and then he's going to swap into like cyclones and thors and like other things, right? 
And then they just keep massing battle cruisers, and I'm like shocked because I'm like, oh, that's really bad. Like that's so countered by me just building more corruptors, right? But it's like it's this rare thing. So, um, yeah, in general, you have that spire down. That should be really easy. You're dead from here. That there's a waste of time. The rest of this replay, okay, that's that's too far behind. I thought we might see like a weird few late game fights, but let's hop out of that replay because you are way too far behind there. Um. Okay, cool. Let's let's look at another replay. Um, you, you said you've been getting cheese and all sorts of stuff. We've given you more of yeah. a decisive plan to follow. Um, but let's look at some of these other early games. Look at, okay. are we consistently overbuilding queens? Or was that game a freak accident? So that we can see if we can fix that. Because you, otherwise, your opening looked pretty decent, right? If we just needed a bit more droning early on to get the machine rolling was the main thing. If there's one overall... So I'm going to write some overall highest priority lessons that we're getting. First okay. one is more drones early, slow down the queen production at the start, get that machine rolling. Um, and we're going to look for any other really, really crucial lessons because if you can have a solid first five minutes of the game, the Roachling into Muter into Roachling, I know will give you value, but there's a lot of things that you might be tripping over with like early crazy charge lot all ins or this or that I have one so, of those if you want to see it <laughs> I, I want to see all the all the all ins i want to see all the the messed up openings i want to see just okay let's lo load these yeah. replays up let's see if we can get through two or three replays really quickly because we're running out of time okay this was a slow this wasn't even charged a lot it was just like a one base uh okay here we go uh cool. zealot rush that just make yeah, me the, uh, the lobby host jimmy's nuts i like the name very nice um okay so all right i mean i, I at some point i caught on to something weird was going on um but even then, I didn't react well at all. It, I think it might have been here where he... Well, no, it wasn't here. Is it that I actually figured this out? I think it's when my overlord was like, oh, there's nothing there. <clears throat> then I went with the, the four lings that you know we talked about. So what do you think you should you should have done? I mean, you should have already realized... I should have started the moment scouting you seen... all over the map, right? Yeah. Well, well you, even here, proxies. right? You should notice early, but you're distracted by the probe, right? So we should know the moment we see no wall off. Hey, this could be weird. Now, maybe he's just walled off on the high ground. He's going to take an expansion a bit later, right? So yeah. that overlord should immediately just redirect through the main base. Go, go check out the main. Okay. If you see nothing at the wall off, you know 100% you're being proxy four gates elevated. There is nothing else it could be, okay? Right. Okay. So no wall off equals proxy four gate zealot. You know, so equals head to the main. Head to the main. No wall off on main equals proxy four gates zealot. Yeah. All right. So what can you do? Technically, it could be something else, right? There are other weird builds out there that people will just throw together. But first things first, lings go straight to their main base. Don't scout for the proxy with okay. the lings. Because you can, they're not going to have any defense at home, okay? So... Send first four lings to their main. Now, you're going to be busy doing other things. So with those lings, if you A-move them or just click them in the mineral line, they can just surround them and kill them. So what you want to do here is you want to click your lings below the mineral line, shift-click to come from behind the mineral line. That way, your lings will automatically run through the little gap in the minerals and start attacking the probes without going too deep into the mineral line. They'll just attack those, like only one or two of your lings will come through and attack. And even if he A-moves you, you'll have a few seconds to pull back behind the minerals. And if he chases you, he'll basically be chasing you into a little choke point, right? Because his probes will be coming out one or two at a time through the gap in the minerals. Does that make sense? Yeah. Use the gap to oh, yeah. keep them out. Anytime. Yeah. And if you're behind a mineral line, there's nothing they can mineral walk to, right? Because otherwise they can mineral walk to their natural to surround your lings, right? The, the probes right. can phase through you, right? But whenever you're behind a mineral line, up, there's, there's no no mineral patch anywhere on the map that will path a unit through that area so this is a, a little trick um if you got if you've ever got a few you know lings or roaches or marines anything 
behind the mineral lines really super sexy because of that. So just a cool, cool little tip. Um, overlords can go across, right? So you can grab this overlord and send it here <clears throat> and this overlord and send it out here. What would be your next call? Do you want to build spine crawlers? Or do you want to try to get up to roaches on one base? Well, I mean, I mean, you've got an expansion, but obviously we're not going to drone up your natural at all. So what do you reckon? Roaches or spines? You know it's four gate zealot. I would think that spines would probably be better because it'd take too long to get to roaches. I don't know. That's Say it with confidence. Call. Say it with confidence. That's, the power that's of my being initial a shark thought. Off player is, is being confident. <laughs> I, don't you, you say, look, I'm not sure if I'm right, but I would choose this in the heat of the action. I would go spines. I don't think the roach run. Okay, cool. You're right. You're absolutely correct. However, this guy has done a really slow proxy gate and it's really far away. So you would get away with roaches if it was executed perfectly. And most people will proxy it much closer up here on the left side. Yeah. No, you wouldn't have time to have roaches unless he stops to kill the hatchery on the natural, which hell, a lot of players will do if you're not playing the highest level player. So it's this thing where like, yes, if you're playing the best proxy gate in the world, what you said is correct. On the other hand, roaches are way better because it allows you to secure your natural and move around the map, right? If you spine up your main base, you've got spines in your main base. But what else does that like? You can't secure a new base. You can't move out. What you'll see sometimes is people just like deny your natural for like five minutes and they expand and turn it into a macro game. So you'd need yeah. to also be going either like Ling Speed and Ling Bane or like Ling's counterattacking to hit the worker line, like I talked about um, combined with it. But yeah, generally, Spines is the right call. So I would say Spines and then just Ling Speed and just Mass Lings and try to keep going around the Zealots to get him. And you can also try to go around and depower the gateways potentially as well. Um, yeah. so you, you can kind of like force them to recall zealots home, then go for the gateways, force them to be there. And then also surround the two zealots that are still at your base. Like you can kind of use your mobility and their immobility to target. You think of it as there's three targets on the map, the zealots that are in your site, in your base, the workers in their base and the pylons. Those are your three targets. Okay. Got it. Okay. Three exposed targets, proxy gate pylons, probe line and low numbers of zealots getting surrounded um zealots suck against zerglings if they get surrounded they're just good if they get a big ball of them where they're all shoulder to shoulder right the phalanx um but you just need one you know hunchback looking guy like uh in 300 right and and he tells you how to get the the surround with your zerglings and suddenly bam those zealots get their ass kicked so just yeah. offer that one weird looking zealot eternal pleasure with your weird harem of stuff anyways um weird analogy aside uh that's yeah that, that i think that's a good one two spines three spines how many do you reckon you'd go mm, probably two i don't okay. know maybe one in the back and two up front i would put them all in your main mineral line in, all in your main behind mineral line. yeah in 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 or behind main mineral line because you want to like be able to defend here? them with your drones kind of thing uh do it again like here ish yeah you could put it right behind the minerals um i normally put like one or two inside the mineral line kind of like it's a cannon or a spore okay. crawler Got but it. i might put like okay. a third one behind if i go for a third um and you may need to mineral walk to surround like if they might if they run straight into your main with like zealots you might need to just like try and surround the first zealots. And if you get a drone surround it's really quite effective at killing them if you do a bit of micro so the micro against zealots zerglings and drones is the exact same micro once you're committed to the fight, so you try to like get a surround or a wraparound or something, because the simpler that is, the easier it is to just A move and then focus on the pullback micro, which is very simple. The moment a zealot starts hitting a unit, you click it and run it away. And you could okay. even stop command it technically, because if, if it's a drone and it stops attacking, it's got lower aggro, so the zealot will change targets because it's like, hey, It'll that's change. not a combat unit. It's, it's easier yeah. to just right click though, just get in the habit of right clicking it. So that okay. way you'll always pull back the Zergling or the drone after it takes two hits and before it takes the third hit and dies. And if you just do that a couple times, oh, I'm three drones higher. I would have lost three more drones. Now I'm on 17 rather than 14, right? Or I'm on 15 rather than 12. And that's a pretty massive portion of your income that early. So that's really nice. Um, okay. Surround Zealots plus pull back the drone drones or zerglings that they target and the real trick there is people think that's like crazy it's not hard micro that's micro i've seen pretty low level players do because if you just a move for the surround right or you drill then a move yeah you'll lose your first drone or two right because you were setting up the surround of the a move but from there you're literally looking at who's the zealot swinging at 
and you're clicking it. You're not trying to wait. Like people always make the mistake of they wait for it to get in the red and they're like, oh, now I'll pull it away. And it's like, no, no, no. Pro gamers are looking at who's getting shot and then they're already pulling it away. Um, blink micro, you know, we in, in a big blink battle in PvP, we're looking at which stalker is up front and has the enemy projectiles like heading towards it. And we pick it up. We're not waiting for its hit points to go down. We're looking for who's getting attacked and we're picking them up. And because of our natural delay with human interaction, ping, whatever else, right? Just our own ability to click it, taking half a second. Oh, the unit gets picked up when it's in the deep red and it looks like this thing we reactively did as a god. No, it's literally just planning it. You were already it's ahead always. of it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you don't need crazy speed. It's just about being nicely set up, right? Those lings shift clicked around the back of the mineral line, going to be a huge disruption without you even microing them. So it's just all these little tidbits here. It's the knowledge, remember, that is going to make up for any speed deficit that we all have. So, um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'd probably go like ling speed as well. But uh, let's take a look. <clears throat> oh, yeah, you go back to droning. Oh, my Lord. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh-oh. And you see your zerglings are going to get surrounded? Oh, you did a little bit of micro, which is nice. Luckily, he didn't pull as many probes as he should have. And here, you're trickling into the zealots. Whereas, what do you want to do? You want to run past and go to his probe line. Because that checkmates yeah. him. Or run past and kill this zealot, right? So you kind of get behind them, which is really cool. Um, obviously, control grouping eggs can get a bit messy in these scenarios. So I might change my rally point for my lings into my main. And then I've got like my 12 zerglings that have run past on my main army group. And I'm actually not control grouping new zerglings that are popping out. I'm manually controlling them. Or I've put them on a secondary army key or something like that. Um, it's yeah. also something where if I pull my drones to fight zealots, I have them all on an army key so that I can easily mineral walk, select number two, click them on the minerals, A move, or I can run them all away because they're all getting too damaged and I've already won the fight. No, no need to throw drones away, away senselessly, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, this is a pretty slow zealot attack he did. And this is the glory of, uh, of, of ladder, you know. This is actually not too hard to stop because... If you'd reacted immediately, this is 307. Let's go back to when you got that scouting info. So you already at this point could probably make the read, but let's say we waited, pushed the Overlord in. Let's say it's 210 before we react, which is giving you a lot of time. Like you easily right. could have moved the Overlord to the left and seen the ramp by then. You start mm -hmm. massing Lings here, build two spines in the main. Your Lings just keep going past to their main base. Heck yeah. You'll do well. And if you've got those spines in your mineral line, it's really easy to hold position drones in front of them as well. Have you ever done the whole right. position? Yeah, micro? just surround them. Yeah, so that they don't they can't attack it. Yeah, and like if they're coming in the left side of your mineral line between the spawning pool and the hatchery, and you got a spine, like you just need to grab those drones that are on the left side of the mineral line and then just click them on the spine and then press hold position and they'll they'll block the whole left side. Your other drones can still be mining freely and doing all their stuff. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I saw you doing that. I, I did that on a queen the other day. It actually good. worked really well. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's like, wow, this actually works really well. If your opponent so. doesn't react quickly, it's insane. Like, it's actually wild. Because you could just, basically, a whole army is doing nothing. Like, it could be 20 Zerglings just derping or five Zealots just doing nothing. <laughs> it's pretty right. funny. Queens can actually kite the Zealots pretty well. That's very advanced micro, though. I wouldn't care too much about that. Um, but, yeah. When they're like running in your main, like <laughs> if you see me defending this, you'll there'll often be a queen on red hit points, like running circles around a mineral line with these like zealots, like get back here. But uh, yeah, spines are amazing because they have two armor. Zealots have two attacks. So rather than doing 16 damage, they're only doing two times six, 12 damage. Um, I'm not good with numbers, am I? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Two times six, 12 damage rather than 16. Um, so it's pretty massive when you've got a 300 hit point structure takes a lot of zealot hits to kill a spine it's also got seven range and it's doing 25 damage a hit to them so it's uh it's pretty incredible zerglings are amazing damage dealers it's just that they're so fragile right so you're always yeah. looking for the where can we hit them without getting hit you know where, where can we surround the lone zealot go past to the probe line and all that sort of stuff and um you could even technically go for a base trade right like in this scenario if you're killing all their probes but your spines are too late like you could even try to eliminate their their gateways and stuff i wouldn't advise it i think normally you'll spot it early enough you'll get your two spines up a spine takes is it 36 seconds to build so remember we said about 210 you easily could have known 
So yeah, we could have had 210, which means what, two, three minutes at the latest, those spines would be done. That's with a really slow reaction. And that's before these zealots get into your main. So yeah, plenty of time to respond. Awesome, mate. Cool. Should have canceled my third too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in this situation where you're that caught off guard, I, I, we've all been there where you're so thrown. It just, it finishes and you're like, damn, I could have used that, <laughs> that bit of minerals. Right. Um, yeah. Were there any other attacks that were catching you off in general that we can quickly go over theoretically? I mean, we're, we're kind of out of time, so we don't have much, but yeah. was there any specific all in you ran into a lot? Uh, there was this weird, another sky toss thing where he did a proxy, which was really weird. Proxy that I just handled. I just no, uh, no, he did carriers on that one too. I just handled it really badly. I tried. I was like, okay, I'm gonna like take you out. I'm gonna take out the expansion, but then I didn't send in enough units. I think I don't know. All right. Um. But I know this. I mean, I know we're almost out of time, or we are out of time. So. But if, if you don't even want to look at this, that's fine. No, it's all good, brother. Uh, I, I want to see what the fuck these weirdos are doing out there on the ladder, man. <laughs> um, this is obviously we just very quickly eight times this and get a get a gist for it. Yeah. Um, it might be one where if we just A moved across the map with that same roach link timing, it, it counters it simply by us stopping it, you know, 52 drones and making lots of roach link. Um, so he's walling on the high ground. Wait, is this, is this the same one? <laughs> this I wonder if this is the same one. Okay. <laughs> uh, just... This might not be the one I was thinking. I could have sworn this was. Or maybe it was Sky. It doesn't look like Sky Toss. Maybe I clicked on the wrong one. It's a Stargate uh, and a Forge going down. But no no proxy. Yeah, all right. It's a different one, I guess. Uh, maybe I labeled them wrong. My bad. Anyway, let's check. Yeah, Fleet Beacon goes down, but it's just not a proxy. So one yeah. Stargate, I mean, this is no. just an appallingly bad build. Yet again, if we're attacking with Master Roach saying, yeah, there's two voids out, but like, you're still going to do good damage, top into muters and win the game. So yeah. just the standard, like I said, these Protoss players, most of them, their builds are atrocious. And uh, if we just hit some decisive timing attacks, easiest wins of our life. So um, oh. I'd say them actually having two void rays and a battery on the natural and a decent pack of stalkers in decent positions. They could defend the natural from your Roachling, but the third would definitely be going down. You'd be getting some nice momentum. You'd be up to 66 drones, building your round of muters. The Void Rays would come to counterattack. They'd fly into Muter Queen, get killed. He'd desperately try to build Phoenix off to Stargate, and it would be too late. It's it's already game over at that point. So, yeah. So this is this is awesome. It's good. So because... if like half those Zerglings were Roaches, it probably would have gone a different way. Basically. yeah yeah i mean if you're on only 50 drones you could easily have 20 speed roaches and 30 zerglings here a few ravages whatever if you wanted to and yeah you'd, okay. you'd be able to kill it because i mean even if you don't obviously you could try to buy all the void rays you never know you might catch them but even if you don't i mean void rays take a long time to kill all that stuff so <laughs> gotcha. it's uh they'll kill it eventually but but you know not quick enough awesome oh the all auto right, fire thing you gave me too was super helpful Oh, the, the rapid way. fire? Yeah, because it wasn't just corrosive bile. That key works also for the uh, corruptors on the buildings. <laughs> okay, and you're not having like, to press the corruptor piss 300 times. No, it's like. just like, boom, instant. So that was another helpful thing from the last lesson. So appreciate that. That may have made me realize I'm still manually clicking it myself each time, even though I have it on rapid fire, um, <laughs> which is really dumb. I mean, it's good because I like spreading it across multiple buildings, but it's really dumb if I'm just pissing down one building. Anyways, thank you very yeah. much for the love. Uh, I appreciate uh, the coaching. Um, I think you've done pretty good. I think, what was the, the thing we wrote at the top? More drones earlier to get the economy going a little bit harder. Slow down that queen production. Um, we've got a very specific response to the proxy gate zealot. That's a unique scenario, but it's one that will always come back through the meta. So we've explained that scenario now that there's three weak points and that they're very immobile. So you should be able to pick that apart with experience. Your Ling Bane will be all in. There's those notes on the ZVZ. Just keep hitting that as hard as possible and look for how to try to hide from the Overlord, you know? Push it back with the Queen and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Push it back with Queen and sneak whole army out, that sort of stuff, right? Um, yeah. But I think also just try out that Roachling into Muta uh, okay. and then back into Roachling. I think that those guides, because it's got... It's, it's very safe. It's very similar to a standard solid opening. 
This is a really good way for us to learn what is essentially very similar to what we can plug into a Ravager Bane build, a Roach Hydra Lurker build, whatever the hell we feel like doing, right? This is going to be a really good building block for that. But it's also just going to kill a lot of silly Protoss builds and bullshit simply by us being decisive and following this preset game plan. That's going to be awesome. Awesome. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thank you Back so much you, yeah. again. All right, mate. Well, good night. I'll catch you next time. All right. Sounds good. Thanks again. Ladies, man. Yeah.